Hi everybody. Uh, so today we are going to dive into a little known bit of Southern Pines history um, by investigating the Pickford Tuberculosis Sanitarium. Um, now as I've said in previous videos, um, Southern Pines was begun as a health resort in 1884. Um, it allowed a quiet place with clean air for tuberculosis sufferers to recover their health. Um, now around the turn of the century, North America was undergoing an epidemic of the highly contagious bacterial disease, also called consumption, um, as it consumed a patient's body, causing them to basically waste away. Um, so patients were leaving the large cities for the countryside on their doctor's advice. Um, until the development of antibiotics in the um, 1950s, there was no cure for the disease, but sanitation, um, healthy diet, cleaner air went a long way towards the treatment of it. So Southern Pines had many hotels and boarding houses, as well as at least one large tuberculosis sanitarium. However, it was for whites only, um, as were all the sanitariums in the South at the time. The first and only sanitarium to treat African Americans was established here in West Southern Pines in 1897 and was the brainchild of Dr. Lawson Andrew Scruggs. Now, Dr. Scruggs was born to slave parents in Bedford County, Virginia in 1857. Now, after graduating from the American Baptist Home Mission School in Richmond, he went on to study medicine and in 1886 was one of six men to be the first graduates of the Leonard Medical School at Shaw University in Raleigh. Um, having uh, passed the medical exam, he was appointed resident physician at the Leonard Hospital right next to the school. Um, and he was a lecturer at the school while also keeping a private practice at his home in Raleigh. And he also served as a pharmacist for the Capital City Pharmacy, which touted itself as the only colored drugstore in Raleigh. Now his benefactor and friend throughout all of this was Mr. Charles Pickford. Um, he was a Baptist deacon and humanitarian in Massachusetts. And they probably met um, while he was at the American Baptist Home Mission School. Um, so this is who he turned to when trying to establish a proper tuberculosis sanitarium for the horribly underserved black population who represented 40% of the tuberculosis fatalities in the U.S. while con constituting less than 10% of the general population. So they chose Southern Pines for its reputation already established as a health resort. Um, West Southern Pines was a rather successful, predominantly black town next door, and the land there was sold to Dr. Scruggs by the man who developed this area, this Mr. John T. Patrick, um, who also served on the first board of trustees for the sanitarium. Uh, it was named in honor of Mr. Pickford, um, who had since died. And his widow and daughter financed the land and construction of two of the eventual three buildings on the site. Um, one building was for 12 male patients. One building was for 12 female patients. That one was established in 1900. That was the third building. And the, um, the third building, well, second building, was for nurses, kitchen, and um, support staff, offices, and such. So patients, when they were able to pay, were charged only $15 per month. Um, that covered room, board, um, medicine, basically. But funding was always a concern. Donations were always being sought. Um, there were typical um, advertisements and papers um, in the area looking for funding, a lot of fundraisers throughout the area. So that was, um, you know, one of his main concerns was, was trying to, to get funding. Um, it was only supposed to be open from November to May, um, but typically remained open year round. That's just sort of the way it ended up working out. Um, Dr. Scruggs continued to maintain his practice in Raleigh, um, but he traveled back and forth um, between these, these two locations um, and both jobs regularly, even though he wasn't receiving any pay for uh, his work here at the sanitarium. Um, Funding, of course, was never sufficient to fully cover costs, um, but it received much acclaim um, throughout the state and the, the, um, the region and was able to remain open for 15 years, surprisingly. Um, now, in 1913, Dr. Scruggs had to retire to his home in Raleigh due to poor health, and uh, he died on December 1st of 1914 uh, at the age of 57, unfortunately. 
the Pickford Sanitarium struggled to maintain without him, but they eventually closed. Um, the land, as I'll show you here, remains today, um, but none of the original three buildings uh, are still here. Um, it later became a boarding school and eventually became the R.C. Lawson Institute, which was a, a private boarding school for elementary and secondary students established in 1933 um, and I believe closed in the 70s. Ever since then, it's pretty much been an empty lot, I'm sorry, I'm sad to say, but it's a surprising um, bit of history right here in our little town that most people have never, ever heard. <laughs> um, Dr. Scruggs did the best he could with the resources he had to try to help a very undis underserved population. Um, so we can certainly uh, applaud his efforts and um, hope that they continue today. As always, get out there, explore your world, you never know what you might come across.